You're welcome to, you know, go through the side, pick up a glass of wine, a cookie, or sparkling, whatever, and uh, come over here. And uh, it's always fun. We're going to have two sets um, tonight. Um, how many people have never been here before? I always like to check in to make sure no one's traumatized. Um, <laughs> so we're not always this full, but tonight, thanks to these uh, Woo! here, uh, we are. Yeah. <laughs> you come back. We've been uh, doing this uh, series for about 15 years, uh, roughly 500 shows over the, wow. you know, and uh, wow. uh, music of all kinds. And so if you want to travel the world, uh, you don't have to leave Portland, you can just come right here. <laughs> um, and if you want to stream our shows live, we've been doing that as well. And I'm going to welcome the live stream folks. Thank you for tuning in. I hope the audio is on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I have seen some people are on already. So welcome, thanks for joining us. And if you want to, you know, watch yourself after the show, you can tune in too. And <laughs> um, well, <laughs> I have never had the pleasure of meeting Jerry O'Connor or Don Penzian before. Am I we, can, we can change that. <laughs> we can change that. <laughs> no pleasure. Uh, but, uh, you know, thanks to the pre-concert uh, party, I now feel like I know them very well. So, uh, <laughs> Would we go and, home? As, yeah. Uh, and apparently they play music, and so I am... That's an exaggeration. I am so excited to um, hear them perform tonight because... Um, Yes, their reputation precedes them, so. <laughs> Nothing good. Uh, <laughs> welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Gary.
worst mood for me. What, what about you? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Anyway, well, thank you very much. And what a full and wonderful bunch of smiley people we have here tonight. <laughs> we'll change that. Don't you worry. <laughs> Then a few tunes there. I'll keep going for a wee while because you don't hear me talk. When I start talking, I don't stop. All right, Don. I'll vouch for that. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wonderful Don Penzine. <laughs> Don has never been to Portland or in Oregon. No. Never. Wow. Yeah, and they'll never have him back. Don't you worry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but if you hear more reads, keep going. Keep the show going. They're all happy, Don. That's how it works. Oh, okay. Yeah. One. Welcome to this lovely little house, lo not really a big house, in uh, Portland, <laughs> Oregon. Uh, my name is Jerry O'Connor, and uh, I'm here with my good friend Don Benzine. Okay. He's playing tunes for the next hour and, a, hour and tw twelve and a half minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm from the Dog County Loud. Uh, somebody phoned me. Is that a gig? Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Sympa no, no, I, I wouldn't. Then. I'm a professional. <laughs> Every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. That's right. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Uh, you hear where you're from, Jerry? Where am I from? Uh, I'm uh, from my mother's womb. <laughs> my mother played the fiddle. I'm glad you asked that question. <clears throat> and uh, my mother taught myself and my three, two brothers, my sister, the fiddle. And uh, she taught hundreds of kids. She taught the fiddle in the dock. For 45 years, mm -hmm. and we were very lucky to have that in our house. Mm -hmm. it was, she yeah. played the front room, and um, the dock is a small town. It's on yeah. the main Dublin road between Dublin and Belfast, and uh, mm -hmm. we were very lucky. I suppose growing up, she was she played Kelly bands, and her 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 brother-in-law 
and formed a killing band and she played in it and then for the kids you couldn't keep traveling around the country i was a third boy total disappointment you know third <laughs> and, uh, but then she started teaching and uh, she taught so many great kids and uh, it's very funny um, we were very happy to be part of all that Dundalk is halfway between Dublin and Belfast, if mm-hmm. it's just nowhere it is. Mm-hmm. And it was a great time because it's just south of the uh, uh, political border with Northern Ireland. So if you're heading north, you'd want to stop for s- social libation. <laughs> and if you're he- coming from the north to south, the pubs are closed in Belfast on, in the north on a, on a Sunday. So you, you come south and have a pint. <laughs> and, uh, there, was a pu- there was a pub there called Mark's Bar, a very famous bar amongst musicians. Just off the main, just literally it was 20 metres up, 20 yards off the, the main Dublin Belfast Road, so you couldn't pass it. <laughs> <laughs> and Mark and Maeve were great, great, great hospitable <coughs> people. They had the likes of uh, the Dubliners and the uh, Clancy Brothers and Tommy Makem st- stopping and saying, Patrick Cabinet stopped in, he got his two drinks and was sent home. Because <laughs> <laughs> Ennis Keane was only, he was Monaghan, but it was only six miles away on the bus. Um, Bean was there, they, they all came in, they all passed through. But Mark provided a home for musicians, and I was very young. I was walking past the door of the pub one day, and the door was open, usually it was closed because lots of stuff going on around the dock in the early 70s. And oh. um, uh, the door was open, and all these musicians were there, Maurit Garvey and all these musicians from Dublin <coughs> and Belfast were playing, and the local fiddle player who had resided in the, in the, in the pub had passed away. And it was all very sad, but Musicians don't get sad, they just get happy with an opportunity to meet other musicians. <laughs> we're, very, we're very optimistic people. Is that right, Don? Some of us. <laughs> I'm still working on this guy. <laughs> Are you really a musician? <laughs> musicians have to be optimists. I, I'm you not know, a musician, but I saw one on TV once. <laughs> That's enough to depress you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't Victor Gr- Burger. He, he wouldn't make you sad. He, he'd be a very, a very impressive Victor. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so, yeah. What was I talking about? The dog. Don the dog. Oni's. Oni, Oni's bar. Yeah. Well, before Oni had it, that, that was a lunatic asylum. But Mark had a, had a better run but it's lunatic, lunatic asylum than Oni had. All these musicians come in. Anyway, Peter passed away, and uh, I walked in there, and I was handed the fiddle, and I became the resident musician. Mm-hmm. And uh, a few years later, only our friend took it over, and uh, <coughs> things went from very good to very, very, very different. <laughs> 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 anyway, I played th- those, ho- those jigs I played were from Peter McArdles, and uh, Pete McLean, and then I played. I, 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 never, I didn't go to college, but I would consider my undergrad course in Dundalk Marks Bar. And then I went, I went to uh, Fermanagh and did my postgrad. <laughs> and, uh, I'm still, I'm still learning. <laughs> so um, I play a little air now um, from the area. When I was in Marks Bar, I became the resident musician after Peter passed away. I had nothing to do with, with his passing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a documentary evidence. It was not me. And poor Peter had a weak heart. And a lovely man. He was um, he, he's a fiddle player from the area, and Mark used to send a driver out to pick him up. So he lived six miles away in the country in, in Townstown and he'd be brought into Mark's bar uh, to play tunes and then Mark would arrange for a taxi to go home or a, a ride to go home and, uh, but this one night, winter's night uh, Maeve, the wife, Mark's wife a very good woman, she said poor Peter you can't send Peter back to an empty house, Peter was a single man you can't send Mark, Peter home on a night like that so Peter moved into the bar lived upstairs and he never left <laughs> but it meant there was constant music in the, in the pub and it was a great place to meet you know? so um, I was, uh, it was always great memories for me to, to, to replace that man and, and be part of that I felt very honoured And uh, so I'll play a tune from the area I didn't learn this tune in there but I was given a copy of a, a body of music from the area and um, uh, it was a body of tunes that were played uh, back in at the last turn of the last century and uh, what the poets of Dundalk was on the edge of the, of the, of the Gaelic-speaking part of South Ulster. It's, how long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> if you go back to 1700s with Plantation, 1600, 1690, 1609, Plantation of Ulster happened and all the Gaels were pushed out of the north, or mid, mid, mid Ulster, into, into the, what we call the Badlands, to the borderlands of um, Drumlin counties and just about the uh, very poor land. And, but these Gaelic poets thrived in that period of 1700. I always compare it to the dates of uh, Antonius Stradivarius, 
and it's roughly about 1650 to 1750. This was the peak of Gaelic speaking poetry in, in the South Ulster region. You had poets like Seamus Don McCourt, uh, Brian Seamus McCourt, uh, Art, Art Bennett, Art, McCoo, Art McCooey, who wrote Urquhart Craigan, and you had uh, Patrick McLinden, and this other man I'll talk about now, Patrick uh, Peter, uh, Peter Dorney. Peter Dorney's poetry was, was recorded and put to music by the famous Sean O'Reilly. You know who yeah. Sean O'Reilly is? You know, you know Manana Heron? Da, 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 da. I don't play that. <laughs> <laughs> but I play one of the other poems that he put music to, uh, not, not O'Reilly, Peter O'Duda put music to this. It's a poem called Urkhanach Kain Vakanja. Repeat after me. Urkhanach Urkhanach Kain Vakanja. Grimmy Mike. Launch a girl get into my. What do you say? I don't speak very good Irish. Apparently they do. I like I like that. Urkhanach Cain Vakanja translates as roughly as the, the Fairy Hill of Killen. And O'Durnian used to sit on this with, with all his friends around uh, on this hill, which actually is an old megalithic uh, area outside Dundalk. And they recite poetry to it. It's a bit like a conference, you know, mm. without the expense bills and all that carry on. <laughs> and uh, they'd recite poetry to each other. But O'Durnian would recite his poem to this beautiful girl on the edge of the. They lived in a house on the edge, you know. Mm. So it, it, Recipe said poor her. And uh, for his troubles, she would close her windows. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she loved him. Uh, uh, but sad. Sad. Sad but true. <laughs> so we played this little air called Urkunuk Kane Vakanchi. Ask me, Urkunuk Kane Vakanchi. It's even I'm sure you'll speak, I love you all. You know? <laughs> Are you with me? I'm with you. What's your name? George. <laughs>
Languages. I'm only so much of a romantic. Is that right there? So I was like, Urkrak came the Kanchi, but you need that. You need that. So um, there's a woman here, Sandy, here tonight, and uh, hers is her f cousin, related cousin to Ed, with, with, with played music my mother's kitty band, and it's good to see Sandy again here tonight. Uh, still in contact. He's the, last, he's the last contact of our family from my mother's side of, of the music of people. But I mentioned I was playing in Mark's bar all those, all those, those, those few years. <coughs> and I was handed a, a, a document, it was a photocopy of a collection of dance music from the area, Oriole Songs and Dances, which sort of gave me an impetus to start working on the tunes from the area. We were all fiddle players, and in the 60s and 70s, everybody was learning every tune you heard because the radio was aired, and you, you learn this, you learn that. But suddenly I, I got access to a collection of music from my own old home area, which is a... Uh, we had a band, we formed a band then called La Lu, which is the day of love. Lu, Lu, La Vada was, Lu was the, the, god, the, uh, the god, god of creativity and, and he gave his name to Leuven, Leiden, uh, London and Caroline and various, various places. And Lunasa. Well I was at Lunasa is the month of August and, but he gave his name to County Louth, Lu, L-U-G-H. And uh, it's all that, it's, it's all creativity, that's where we are. So, this collection of music became a big part of my life and started learning tunes from it. Not, nothing seriously, but not a standard really, but I'll play one of the first tunes I would have learned, a little hornpipe called Sterling Tom.
You're welcome your family on, on mine tonight, sir. There's a pretty good chance, I hope at least, that my daughter and my granddaughter are online <clears throat> out there in Mississippi. So they are. Hi, Eddie. Hi, Kate. So. He's not out there. They're not there. They're not. <laughs> I hope you are. I hope you're all enjoying this online and then uh, we'll see you soon, I hope. Oh, yeah. We're doing good. Well, thanks very much for asking. <laughs> um, okay, right. So uh, I mentioned earlier on I spent time in, uh, in Fermanagh and my late wife Edna and I was young musicians and there weren't very many young musicians prepared to travel in those days. They're all doing serious things like have, uh, education and carry on. But we were sort of a bit mad, I suppose. Yeah. And um, you know the band, uh, the Boys of the Lock? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> and I call McConnell, a good friend of mine, his, mo his sister and mother used to host us over in their, in their home. And Maury used to organise some little, little uh, events for us. But we were like a bait for the older musicians. <laughs> um, like Fermanagh was the last county in, in Ireland, well, in Northern Ireland particularly, to have electric, rural electrification. So I, I think that uh, it, the reason that Kayleen and, and the song tradition music lasted longer there because there was no televisions. And even when I was there, people would move around and visit each other. And so it's just not as a particularly warm, friendly place, you know. And I was, we were always very well hosted, we hosted very well there. And uh, there's a man there called Big John, Big John McManus, a very, very respectful, handsome guy. He's, when I met him, he was an older man. But he used to, in his earlier days, he used to run a Kelly band. And his kids all became actually pretty good, successful rock musicians. But in, back in the 50s, he, was, he had a Kelly band called, I think it was a Silver or Star, no, that, that was the ship that sank, it was the Titanic. White <laughs> Star. White Star, oh yeah, well maybe it was the Silver Star. <laughs> this band was successful, it didn't, it didn't crash at the first ice <laughs> So um, this white silver star was his kiddie band. But he had a friend home from somewhere who suggested that the Irish music was getting very dull and boring, you know, so kiddie band music. He said, what do you mean? He said, well, he says, it's all the same over and over. And uh, Big John asked, well, what do you think I should do? He said, well, he says, maybe you should, maybe you should uh, get a saxophone into the band. <laughs> <laughs> he says, yeah, he says, yeah. You had a light, that'll jazz it up, that'll make it jazzy. You know? And Big John was, as I say, his sons were very successful. He was an open minded sort of character. So he, um, he, he told his whistle player to go off to, look to Belfast and buy himself a saxophone player. And musicians are quite, musicians are quite, you know, <coughs> musicians are quite um, sort of resourceful people. Not the smartest, intelligent, but, but very resourceful. You know? and they, can, they can sort of, as the word we used in uh, COVID, they can, they can pivot. Is that the word? <laughs> <laughs> I, love that. I would prefer the word periet, but uh, pivot. <laughs> anyway, the whistle player was sent to Belfast to get a, to buy, a whistle, to buy a saxophone, and he came back with a saxophone. He, he drove his wife nuts learning the saxophone, you, know, you can imagine. But then anyway, Big John's friend came home a couple of years later, and he heard the band <coughs> with the saxophone player, and, and he's very impressed. He's, oh, that's great. That, that music really jazzed up now. Yeah? Thanks, he says. Uh, but one thing he says, he's the, the saxophone player. What is it? He says, he has the mouthpiece upside down. <laughs> 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 but, but anyway, but, uh, big, but Big John had bigger problems. <coughs> he had bigger problems than that. Uh, his singer was, let him down one night. The singer couldn't make it. So he put the word out amongst the amongst his, uh, the Kelly group, and uh, he needed a singer. And this young woman approached him and said, I can sing a few songs tonight and help you out. And, so they sat down and they talked about the arrangement of the songs and he liked the way she sang and she liked the way he treated her and uh, she married him. <laughs> <laughs> Not that night, maybe six months later. But anyway, it was nice, Valerie married him and uh, Big John later wrote a little tune in her honour called The Curtiston Rose. And a lovely little uh, what, what was She was from the townland of Curtiston outside Rosley in County Fermanagh. So that's it, that's we played that air and then we played a little um, Hornpipe after it. This is written by a woman called uh, Nolene O'Sullivan uh, from a very musical family of the Gavins. And I'd, I'd recorded the tune, I'd, I just thought it was a great tune, and, and uh, then I was told this, it was written by this woman. And I said, well, I better ring her. So I, I didn't tell her I had read, recorded it. <laughs> well, I was going to record it. So I phoned her and I, I'd met her before, this lovely woman. 
uh, knowing. And she said, I'll tell you about that tune, Jerry. She says, uh, I wrote that tune when my daughter came home from Scotland. Our daughter emigrated to Scotland, got married, and came over back home to Ireland. And um, we're a first child, and at Christmas they're all home. She said we had a great big party, playing tunes and laughing and all that. And then after the week, my daughter went back to Scotland with the child, with her family and that. And um, she was a wee bit sad. She says so. Her husband, being the chief psychiatrist of the family, decided let's go shopping. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that solves every woman's problem. Yeah, that's what, that's what men think. Yeah. And they have still to learn how to treat women. But anyway, so he said, no, I'll go down to my room, and she's a dental parlour, and uh, I'll just play a few tunes. And she said, I wrote this tune, she said, the little, first part was very happy, second part was a wee bit sort of even and all that, and, she said, and the last part was a wee bit sad, you know, with the family leaving. So she said, I called the tune, The Quiet House. That's what was appropriate. So we play these two tunes, The Curtis and Rose, and The Quiet House. Play these for Sandy. Yeah.
think we might need one. I think we might need one. Well, we'll play a few tunes and then we'll take a wee break because I think you need a break. And when you're taking your break, we'll take a break. <laughs> Thanks, Don. I never, I never thought of that. You live in a break, don't you? That's all I do. <laughs> Here, take a break. So I'll give you reels and finish off. And cheers. The grass I love. My friend of mine called that the fiddle bra. Things I have to put up with. So I'll play five reels called O'Connor 4. <laughs> Musicians going to be counted for one. <laughs> but in this, uh, this, set, this set of tunes I recorded on the my last solo album, a studio, studio album. Uh, my son is a studio producer, an uh, engineer, and he's a great guy. He produced hundreds of child albums and actually concert albums, he says, with concert orchestras. But uh, he played on the album. I played on the album. It's my album, so I played it. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> on my solo album, I played it. My son played it. And then we had uh, Martin O'Connor, a good friend of mine, played on it, a uh, box player. And, uh, and then we also had Jerry Banjo O'Connor. <laughs> the other Jerry. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> now we're good friends. Now we're good, we're, we're good friends. Yeah. <laughs> now we're good friends. So, um, but there's five reels. And what it was, we, we, I asked all the, all the O'Connors to play a track at different points of the album. And this is our little um, sum up of the whole thing. So it's a, a selection of reels I like to teach. Actually, I'm teaching, I'm teaching a workshop tomorrow. If anybody would like to come along, uh, it'll be uh, in town here in Port Portland, Oregon, North America. That's where we are. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> Over in Nancy's house. Thank you for accommodating us, Nancy. Where's Nancy? She's run away. She's cleaned the house. Are you not supposed to be home cleaning the house? For the workshop to, are you not supposed to clean the house for the workshop tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Just make sure. Because <laughs> when I finish, there'll be blood on the floor. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so a few reads I like to teach, starting with um, the Hesley Breeze and then the Scotch Mary. And then, anyway, a few more. And we finish with a tune called something else. Yes. <laughs>
Cheap seat stand up. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm so glad you like moving up in the second half. I just love it how we're all, you know, <laughs> down towards the front. How many left? Uh, <laughs> we have a full, a full, uh, full room here. Um, so anyway, I don't know if you know, but we have one more show coming up in March. Uh, Hanukkah Castle and her band, and that's going to be fabulous. So if you haven't heard of Hanukkah, it, this is the time to discover her fabulous music and um, and her band. So, um, wow, I am really thrilled to have um, Jerry and Don back on the stage. Um, never a dull moment here. <laughs> you, you should have said we were leaves of Jerry and Don back on the stage. <laughs> Fabulous Thank you. Uh, having you all here, um, and fabulous having you online too. So, without further ado, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you very much. Welcome back to live music. Here, here we are in Abby's house in Portland, Oregon. Thank you. Was that right? Yes. <laughs> it doesn't always work like that. Tell me. It's Sunday. It's so and it's Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> 19, 19 what? <laughs> <laughs> so thanks very much. Thanks for coming and not, not running away. You know. So there are a few tunes I recorded with a band called Oriole from my area, and uh, they will finish off McFadden's Hanson. Mm -hmm. McFadden's owns it. Really. So I play a tune. Uh, I was somebody mention a song that I used to play, and it's a song about a man and a woman. Well, that's, that, that happens today too, and uh, but he this what well, this man decides to fall in love. Well, he said he fell, fell in love with this woman, and then he goes off and falls in love with a second woman. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Any other comments? <laughs> <laughs> but what he what he didn't realize the first the first woman was very 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 rich. Uh, oh. So he's now. Heartbroken, <laughs> and he tries to win her back. You know, the idiot. He, uh, he, it, he, 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 he sort of digs a bigger hole. He's, uh, he, he writes a song and he says, "I wish you were coming back." It, I, he actually says the Irish language is "fadalim, is fadalim umi umi, is fadalim umi umi." I'll try to sing it. Will I? No. Don has been a great support. <laughs> I, I, tr I trust Tom. Anyway, uh, his father. Aubrey. 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 His father, the Moomy, Moomy. His father, the Moomy, Jimmy She. His father, who's from DC. Molly, one, one, we couldn't know. I get paid not to sing. <laughs> <laughs> but he says in the Irish language, he, he actually promises to stop, to stop drinking alcohol. What a, what a loser. <laughs> he says, uh, it's, it's, she's gone, she's gone, she's gone, my beautiful woman with the credit card checkbook and all. <laughs> she, in the meantime, she's gone off with a guy, a young guy, a young sailor boy, sailing around the Caribbean. There's a wee bit of reggae kicks in at the end of the song. <laughs> <laughs> just, to, just to reinforce her, 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 her good decision making. And uh, we put a tune before it. Uh, just to compound the error of his ways, a tune called The Destitution Ring. Oh. <laughs> and to reinforce his misery, and he put the same tune at the end. You know? <laughs> this this uh, read was written by a man called Aaron. Um, oh, he used to sell wine in France. Anyway, I think it was him. Uh, Ethnic Yorkin wrote, wrote the song, uh, wrote the melody. Yeah. So, Mal Wanda could not fair Molly Hollywood. <laughs>
Stevenson, yeah, written by Ian Stevenson. I can think of his name now. For him. He was a, a, a lovely mandolin player. Yeah. Long, uh, maybe he's not time for it. But my daughter was in town one day. I, I, Ian was going to arrive at our house, and uh, it was all planned, but we weren't home from summer. My daughter was in town, and this hippie van pulled up at the dock. <laughs> my daughter was, was a school uniform, and I said, there's the hippies, you know. And then she went home on the school bus, and there's this hippie van that said local pub, in Lumpers Pub, where I, where I frequent. And uh, she played pool with her friends, and then she went up home, and the hippie van was outside our house. And she, she, she's pretty freaked. She said, I've seen this hippie van twice, this, three times this day. And she went into the house, and there was the hippies all sitting at our table. <laughs> that was Ian Stevenson. And we were home later on that evening, and she really freaked. She said, what are these hippies doing in our house? <laughs> that, the guy who wrote that shame was, was that hippie. <laughs> yeah, he, says, he used to import wine from England, from, to, from France, or something like that. There's too many complicated arrangements in this world. <laughs> so I'll play a, a few. Uh, I used to be, um, where, where we go with this one? I'm going to play some single jigs. Single jigs are 12 8. In the south of Ireland, they call them, the, they call them slides. In northern countries, we call them uh, single jigs. They're all 12 8. You know? If you're a dancer, as Sam knows, you know that single jigs are single jigs. You know? And slides are something else. You know? But uh, these three tunes, I play these tunes, I learn these tunes from musicians who are never recorded professionally. They were all great musicians, but that's what's happening with music, it's becoming very standardised. So, uh, Johnny Lockyer was a fiddle player from County Tyrone, never recorded professionally, wonderful musician. Uh, and he used to travel around the flowers, blind man, full of tunes. Second tune from a fiddle player in the dock called Peter McCardle. And uh, the third tune was a man who wrote the tune called The, the Band She. You know, if you know the Bothy Band, da, 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 da. he wrote that. But I'm not going to play it. Uh, <laughs> uh, he was a man called James McMahon. He wrote lots of great tunes, but yeah. he, he didn't write this next tune, but he wrote the Banshee. But uh, I, used, I, was good, I had a very good friend, Roger Sherlock, if you remember the name, Roger Sherlock was a great flute player, played with Sean McGuire, played with J J J J J Joe Burke and all that. He was from, um, well, he's always known as a Sligo flute player, and uh, he moved back to Ireland in just about 20 years ago now. And I got to know Roger, he, used to, he, used to be very, he was very good to me. He told me he was he used to learn the he, to, he wasn't actually from Sligo, he's from Mayo, but he used to cross the field at night into Sligo to listen to <laughs> Sligo Flipper. The Ireland's very, very, very careful, it's uh, very political, very parochial. You know? But Roger told me he used to sit outside this guy's window at night, this guy would play the flute all night, and uh, Roger learned a lot of music from it. And, uh, when he was 15, like most of young people in Ireland, young men, he emigrated to England, and just before he went to England, the flute player that he used to listen to passed away and he was sort of, should I approach the widow about the flute? He said, I'll leave it like a back. He says, I, 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 I really respect this guy. But he, he says, when I come back to Ireland, he says, after two years, he says, I promise to go back and visit her and offer to buy the flute. So he worked in London, as a, he, Roger was a, shirt, was a carpenter, he worked with all the great musicians in London. He came back two years later, he said, and he, he went to the widow and he said, uh, your, your husband was a, an amazing flute player. We all adored his flute playing. And uh, she didn't sort of share his, uh, his, his optimism. She said, that fella, he never worked a day in his life. We all loved to listen to him. Ah, that fella, Jesus. He <laughs> never lifted lift, lift his hand for him. But if, if, if you wouldn't mind, I'd offer to buy the flute that he used to play, maybe if uh, the kid, if your children aren't playing. <coughs> and uh, at those times it wasn't popular. And uh, she said, the flute? She said, the flute? She says she can have it. She said, I've been stirring the porridge with it for the last two years. <laughs> <laughs> and Ro Roger, said, Roger told me, he says, it was the best flute I ever had. <laughs> so these tunes I call uh, stirring, uh, uh, stirring the porridge. Mm -hmm. Middle tunes. Yeah, there you go. There's hope for us
finish. <laughs> For, first time. <laughs> that was great. Okay, and I was actually thinking of the next tune now. It's funny when you're trying to talk and play and play and talk, it's a quite a complicated business. <coughs> isn't it? I spoke to a woman the other night, she said, uh, uh, I don't know, up in the Mid Vernon, and, and Katie said to me, I've been playing away, and I don't know what to say when I'm going to talk about you. Know? And I just say, I, I play first and talk afterwards. <laughs> 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 it's, 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 it has to make it sort of interesting to people who don't know the music or whatever. And it's also nice to the stories because, you know, it, everything is related. These are all just simple tunes. But um, as a fiddle player, I've always admired other fiddle traditions and I play a little bit of Breton music, is the Scandinavian music. But I, I was very impressed with the, with the uh, French Canadian music for mm -hmm. years. You know? mm -hmm. yep. And the uh, people like uh, T. John carrying on. And it's not just learning tunes for the sake of learning tunes. T. John Carrion had a connection with Ireland. He loved uh, Sean McGuire and uh, Michael Coleman music way back. So I met him one time in Sligo, and that I didn't meet him very well, for very long. He sort of walked past me. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I really had great respect for him. And he was an amazing fiddle player. T. John Carrion played all the classical <coughs> music. Are you okay? No. <laughs> see, see a doctor. I will. No. <laughs> Jesus. I, as somebody said one time, all the great musicians are dead. Sean McGuire is dead, Michael Coleman is dead, Seamus Ennis is dead, I'm not feeling so well myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, teach John Carrion on his dead. Yeah. But a wonderful musician, played all the classical repertory and uh, Tip Tchaikovsky. I used to know his, uh, his, his producer, Patrick Quinn. Patrick, Patrick, Patrick Quinn. And he said, he, he said, uh, T. John Carrion was very happily married, but his wife wasn't. <laughs> so, so she used to have him play in the basement. You know, was, I'm glad he never built a basement in my house. <laughs> so, I'd never said that. But I played this tune of one of his, it's called the American Polka, and we play uh, another polka after that. You all you know the second one. It's so well known, I won't even introduce it because I can't remember the name. <laughs> Thank you. 
take it easy. Don't get too excited. <laughs> it's not that good. <laughs> Thank you. That was uh, Carrie Dan's version of the American Pocket. So I'll bring a tune from home. Um, I think it's for Cathy Schneider. She was uh, she organised some of my events up in uh, Cincinnati in Ohio, and she was asked for the song. It's a song. Um, I'm not sure when it was written, but a lot of songs were written um, sort of name-checking places and all that. This particular song um, name-checks goddesses of Greek and, and uh, Egyptian mythology. Like at, at Back in the 1800s, was, you couldn't get an education as a Catholic in Ireland. Uh, they were all... Uh, they had to go abroad. They were wealthy Catholics, but... Uh, they couldn't get. They weren't allowed to be educated. They couldn't, couldn't carry a gun. They couldn't have a have a horse. Could do a boat. And the idea was to keep the whole nation as a as a food producing society for for main, main, mainland Britain. Pardon me, but don't, don't quote me now. <laughs> and, uh, that's what it was. It was meant to be a farm for for England. Um, and so they used to send their boys, mostly fellas, off to mainland Europe, places like there was, there was about forty Irish colleges in Europe at one point. There's colleges up in Leuven, which is still there, the Irish Centre. I, I, I lived in Paris for a while. I spent time in London in the, in the Paris College. But there's colleges also in Salamanca, in Bordeaux, and uh, 40 colleges, just to educate Irish kids going abroad. Many of them were seminaries for the priesthood and all that. Not, not exclusively. But uh, the British decided it was a bad idea to have the Irish going abroad because they, they came back with revolutionary ideas. <laughs> Can't have that run here, no, 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 Irish people can tend to talk about everything and anything. They keep talking until they think of something to say. I wasn't. <laughs> 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 I've seen nothing again. I never, I never open my mouth. As <laughs> a guy, as a guy, he passes. He, 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 what? Is that me? Oh, that's you. That's very bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, not you doing that. It's very bad music. Oh. <laughs> There's the guy who, uh, his, his wife asked him to pass him the lips, lipstick, and uh, he passed her the, we call it a print stick, uh, a glue stick, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and she never spoke to me again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Max, moving on. <laughs> How did I get to that, that low point? <laughs> anyway, we'll play, play a little air. Oh yeah, this, so this, this fella came back and he had no... He, he's trying to impress this young girl with his Greek no, Latin knowledge of Greek literature and Latin literature. And she looked at him and he, 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 he said, you're like Phoebus, this beautiful girl, and Diana. He, he used every trick in the book, in the classical book. And I still didn't impress her and she said, you're just like me, you're just a peasant. But it gives a great song called Bessie, the Beauty of Ross Near Hill. And uh, I learned this song from a friend of mine, Gaby McCardle. Gaby's still around. I go through my Facebook today, I think there's a bit, lots weren't. But Gaby's around. Hi, Gaby. Say, say hi to Gaby for me, please. <laughs> um, Gaby McCardle from Fermanagh. He told me he, he used to sing this song, knowing he didn't have the full song, he had most of it. But he was sitting in a, having a social libation one day, minding his own business. And this young guy comes in with a piece of paper and he says, he says, Gaby, Gaby, my dad told me to give you that. And there's a sheet of paper and uh, <coughs> Gaby started reading and he says, I says, who's the guy? He says, I don't know. He says, but all the words of the song were there, uh, of the song. And uh, Gaby learned the song, still doesn't know where it came from. But uh, the great song called Bessie, the Beauty of Ross in Your Head. Sometimes the introductions are longer than the tunes. <laughs> In this case, I apologise. Yeah. <laughs> will I will I play? Please, yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. sure. <laughs> I can tell you more about. <laughs> <laughs>
loves that one so much he doesn't bother us. I just like to listen to it. I know, so do I, but I, I can't sit there. I can't sit there listening to it, can I? <laughs> Somebody's got to work. Somebody's got to do a bit of stuff around here, yeah? Don is the um, best guitarist I can afford. <laughs> <laughs> At a certain level, you know, Hey, but in a certain point, he just says, no, I wasn't paid to do that. That's it. I'm done. I've I'm earned my pay. You, you, yeah, union rules, yeah. But uh, thanks, thanks, Don, for, for most of it. Thanks. You're welcome. Well, we're going to say thank you very much for coming here, for, for being, for coming. We were coming here anyway, weren't we? <laughs> but thank you for coming here. We really appreciate that. And uh, thank you to Abby and her husband, Jay. Her, her husband. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, I have to say, it's our pleasure because it is our oh, pleasure. I'm good at fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for coming. It's so great to have you here. It um, is. It's yeah. Really? Thank I you. mean, Thank what you. an experience. Don't yeah. you feel like you've all traveled somewhere else? Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. I've be, been to Mars and back. Exactly, we're all traveling in the spaceship. I love it. No, thank you. Open your home. Thank you, Abby. This is a very special occasion. Uh, We have a workshop tomorrow for fiddle players at, uh, I think, in, uh, at what time is it at, Nancy? Seven. Six. Six. Seven. 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 Are you sure? Seven. In the morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah seven o'clock in the morning, yeah. <laughs> 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 it's an eight-hour eight day, union rules, we book eight hours, yeah. <laughs> so seven at Nancy's house, and then we put, any, anything happening after it? Uh, no. you want. I was, afraid you'd, I, was, I was afraid you'd say that. <laughs> Party and Nancy's, we're all going. <laughs> and so for both ladies of the house, we're going to play a tune called The Maid Behind the Bar. Right. Yes, yeah, great tune. So uh, thank you. I appreciate uh, all your attention and all your hospitality and all your good humour. It's been a very special night for us. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and what I want to know is, will I get a bonus if I play this one? <laughs> <laughs> glass, glass, of wine, glass of wine for the gentleman. There you go. <laughs> Done. Uh, not the best wine. <laughs> <laughs> a, wine of a wine of sufficient quality that he'll drink it, but he won't be looking for a second one. <laughs> Anyway, that's the data reel. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
was. <laughs> it's very lonely out there. There's drafts on the door. There's a cat, there's a cat there pawing on my leg. You know. <laughs> Must be once. Out? Probably. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. This is a very it's a beautiful, beautiful setting to play tunes in. And I'm very, very happy to be here. So we play a, a little tune we've been playing for a while. It's a tune called The Mummer's March. And it's a Captain Francis O'Neill, or they call him in, they call him in, in Chicago in a Chief O'Neill, but yeah, yeah. we always knew him as Captain Francis O'Neill. We, we, they're getting up their station in Chicago, I think. <laughs> uh, but I think he was captain. But he, he, so, but he wrote. He he he, he said his tune was a, a, a dance for men with big sticks, and a, a part of a mummer's, <coughs> mummer's march tradition, mm -hmm. and they move around in circles and beat the head of each other. <laughs> it was forgotten for a long time. Before the invention of Advil, it was not very popular. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we'll play a highlight after. I like I like playing this tune. We were coming in the road talking about um, Fierke, Fierke uh, yeah. and his grandfather would have had a program on the radio and he would have played this tune at a Highland clip called uh, Bog and Lachen, played by Bill Lamy, Bill Lamy, I don't know the name, uh, Breton fiddle player, and then I played a tune from this collection of music that I've sold out and I haven't got any more of the body of music from home. I didn't talk too much about it tonight because there's no sales. <laughs> <laughs> and the last tune is a tune called uh, Launching the Boat. And uh, I hope this boat keeps launched here with, with Abby and uh, the community we have here. It, it may this boat survive and thrive and the launching of the music. Is, thank you very much. It's, live music is, is hard to replace. <laughs>